hello guys and welcome to my channel in this tutorial I will show you how you can make this blue moon sweater or jumper which is a super comfortable and cozy sweater and it's worth in Tunisian crochet so I hope you will enjoy it and I hope you will try to make it because it's work it's working pretty fast and it's uh, kind of easy to make for this project I'm using this cartople melange wool which is a mix of wool and acrylic yarn and also um, some viscose. The recommended needle crochet hook is 5mm is a worsted weight yarn but we will use a 8mm Tunisian crochet hook and you will need a wire at least or of 60 or 40 millimeter because the entire width of the uh, sweater has uh, 54 centimeters so you will need a wire to um, have space for all those stitches so we will start to make a foundation chain you'll have to chain 60 stitches or you will need an even number of stitches if you want to um, make the sweater larger or smaller you will need um, mo to have an even number of stitches the sweater which um, we are making today is size small and is the one that I'm wearing in the photos so it's a pretty um, large sweater and oversized so, and you can find a written pattern for other sizes also on my blog and I will let the link into the description below. Now we are starting with the foundation row, starting with the second stitch from your hook. You'll just have to insert the hook and pull out a loop. And continue like this in each chain stitch that you have until the end of the row and at the end of the row you'll have 60 uh, stitches or loops on your uh, hook now the turning row yarn over and pull it through one stitch and then yarn over and pull it through two for the entire row this is the foundation row as, and is in the um, simple Tunisian stitch Starting with the next row, we will uh, change the stitch pattern. We will have um, uh, the main stitch will be the knitting Tunisian stitch, but also we will have some sk uh, skipping stitches there to create that ribbing effect. So now in the first stitch here, because we are doing the knit stitch, knit Tunisian stitch, so instead of inserting the hook um, behind that loop you will have to insert it from front to back okay so now I just yarn over and I have to skip one stitch so I'm not going to go behind that uh, loop so from front to back now you have to yarn over and skip one and again make a Tunisian knit stitch so see that that stitch there has two loops one in front and one in back and basically you'll have to insert the hook through both of them and you'll repeat like so so one yarn over skip one and make another knit stitch yarn over skip one and another one to the end of the row at the end of the row of course that you will have um, 60 loops on your hook don't forget to make also the last stitch because this one is really really important so now the turning row will be the same so yarn over and pull it through first and then yarn over and pull it through two to the end of the row I made this uh, sweater in using two colors this uh, gray and that blue but if you want you can uh, make it in one single color 
Okay, now we are starting to work basically our repeated row. So the first stage will be the Tunisian knit stitch, then yarn over and skip the space and go into the next stitch and make the Tunisian knit stitch. And this is what you will have to repeat for the entire sweater, excepting the uh, ribbing, because for the ribbing we will use a regular crochet and you will need also a 6 mm crochet hook. I forgot to mention it, this at the beginning. So now we are doing the turning row, which is the same. Pull it through one at the beginning and then pull through two, pull through two to the end of the row. And you'll have to repeat this row. We will repeat it to the armpit because uh, for the armhole we will change the color. And in total I made uh, 40 rows in this color. And we will meet at the end of the 40, 40 rows. After 40 rows we will meet again to change the color into the last loops, last two loops that we have on our turning row. So here I have my last two loops and now I just cut the yarn and I'm changing the color. So basically I just take the other color and pull it through the last two loops that I have. And now we will continue with the same stitch pattern for four rows because after that we will start to work the neckline which is a V neckline as you saw in the pictures and we will meet after four rows to just see how we will work that V uh, shape neckline before starting the neckline we will have in total five rows but we will meet after four to see how we will work from there now we are just uh, continuing with this uh, lighter color, making the same stitch pattern as until now. Okay, I did four rows and then I marked the middle stitch. So you have, uh, you will need to have 30 stitches on the left, 30 stitches on the right, so exactly in the middle but you will see if you have 30 stitches while you were working the uh, this fifth uh, fifth row which is in this light color so now we have two loops and we will continue until we will have 30 loops on our hook and see if you we if we put the stitch marker in the right place if not, the important thing is that uh, if you had, we had 60 stitches at the beginning to shape the V uh, neckline, we will need to work half and half. So we will need 30 stitches on the hook. So now I have 30 stitches and now I can um, take off the stitch marker and you can place it on the hook just to know on your turning row because we will work the turning row only for the half of the piece so just to know um, where to go and where you need to stop so now I will continue to work this row which is the fifth row in this lighter color and then we will meet at the end of the row to see how we will start to work the neckline. So now you just have to count the stitches. Basically you need to have uh, 30 and 30. And now we will go with the turning row only just for the half of the number of stitches so where you place the stitch marker. So basically you will have one loop on your hook before the stitch marker. And then we will start to decrease to create that V shape uh, neckline, that V neckline. 
okay so I have one loop before the stitch marker now because I want that the neckline to have that border which is just in the Tunisian knit stitch we will work the first three stitches in the Tunisian knit stitch so I'm working the first one then here where I have a space you will have to insert the hook into that chain that it's uh, formed there and three so we have now four loops and now we have to make the first decrease so working two stitches together so first I'm getting with the hook into that chain here because this one is basically a stitch and now into the next stitch and I have to pull the yarn through these two stitches <laughs> a bit difficult at the beginning but you will get it so trying again pull it through all the stitches and this was our first decrease so basically we just worked two stitches together and now we are continuing with our stitch pattern I have a space here so I need to yarn over and then I will go to the end of the row following the same stitch pattern and then again on the turning row you will have to stop at the stitch marker but let's continue working this row at the end of this row you will have with one stitch less because we decreased with one stitch so basically instead of 30 we will need to have 29 stitches on our hook so let's see if we have 29 stitches if you have we have 29 this means that we are on the right way with our decreases so now we can start making our turning row which is the same we are not changing anything with this one I think that you can make the decrease uh, decreases on the turning row as well pull it through three stitches instead of two where you have to make the decrease I'm not sure about it and I'm not sure how it works but you can try so now we are starting the next row and we will have another decrease after working the first three stitches in uh, Tunisian knit stitch so basically the border that we will have on the neckline will have four stitches and now we have to work the next two stitches together so not like so because I skipped one stitch or you can just uh, um, we have to work two stitches together so you can skip the uh, and not yarn over or you can uh, work the two stitches together this row was just to show you uh, how you can make the decrease if you don't want to work into the chain stitch so simply you can skip it and just work the two knitting stitches uh, that are uh, um, before and after the space you can just work them uh, one after the other just to um, make the decrease so without yarn over so these are two methods when you have a, a space a yarn over which has to be worked together with a neat stitch you can just simply skip it and now we will work the next row here I have the two stitches which are one next to each other so I don't have a space between them so I just have to work them together and now in this way making the decrease now I have to yarn over because I have a space and continue with the pattern that I have and that I uh, we did until now and basically these two rows has to be repeated until you have in total 20 rows so counting the first uh, five the first five that we did before starting decrease you will have in total 20 rows so you need to decrease with 15 stitches so at the end you will have only 15 stitches left 
and you will have one row you will have to work together a space so a chain stitch and a stitch and on the next row you will have two stitches to work together two knit Tunisian knit stitches now after finishing 20 rows we will just have to work the turning row and then to bind off this side of the front panel because we are done with it and we will start working on the uh, other half I will just work this uh, turning row and then in case if you don't know how to bind off in Tunisian crochet I will just show you right away okay so to bind off is basically it's like a working a regular row forward row only that instead of keeping the loop on the hook you just pull it through the loop that you already have on your hook so this is how we bind off all the stitches and pay attention where you have a space you'll have to because that is a stitch also you'll have to insert the hook through that chain and work the, um, the stitch as well that stitch as well so going in through the chain pull out a loop and pull it through the loop on your hook and we will continue like this until we will complete all the stitches that we have on this side and then you can cut the yarn and fasten off and we will start working on the other half of the front panel and work the neckline on that side as well don't forget here at the end of the row really important in the Tunisian crochet not to forget the last stitch with each row okay so now this side is done so we have that border of four stitches and then the decreases which are making the V shape of the neckline in case you want a different neckline you can just go uh, with the uh, rounds for the end of the front panel now let's see how we will work the other half so we uh, left at the uh, turning row so basically we have to rejoin the yarn here and starting to make our turning row this time on this side we will make the decreases at the end of the row not at the beginning as on the other side but first let's just um, make this turning row and then we will see how to do the decreases on this side and remember that on the other side we just uh, worked four Tunisian knit stitch at the beginning so uh, three basically but with the loop on a hook there were four stitches so now it's better to mark the first the last four stitches because in this way you will know that before those uh, last four stitches you will have to make the decrease this can be uh, you can use the stitch marker for the first row or to change and to move it with each row if you want and if you find it easier this way so now I will work the stitches in the same stitch pattern up to the two stitches before the stitch marker because I put the stitch marker exactly in the um, fourth stitch before the end of the row so I will just stop when I have two stitches left like here so I have one space and one Tunisian knit stitch and I will have to work these two together to make the decrease so I just insert the hook through that chain and then through the knit stitch and then I have to pull the yarn through all this all both stitches basically now I will just remove the stitch marker and I will work the last four stitches 
with the tunisian knit stitch so here i have a space so i would just work a regular stitch then going into the next one then again a space and now the last stitch okay and now we will do the turning row you can tie those ends uh, back there to just make sure that the loop that first loop won't get any bigger so now we will do the turning row and this was the first row we decreases so we decrease so we will start working the next row together because it's a bit different because instead of having one space and one stitch to work together we will have two knit stitches to work together so this is the only difference now at the beginning you can uh, also put a stitch marker in the fourth stitch before the end of the row if you want to know exactly where do you have to make the decrease but it will be pretty visible from now on because we have different stitches at the end the pattern is looking a bit different so I will just go working the stitch pattern until I will have basically six stitches left which are the four that we are using as a border and then the two before those four in which we have to make the decrease okay so these are the two stitches so I yarn over because before those two stitches I have a space and now I pull the yarn through all uh, both those stitches and now working the border which are four knit Nishjian stitch basically three and the last stitch which is worked in the same way it doesn't matter in which stitch pattern you are working the rest of the stitches so now I will just turn and you will have to repeat those two stitches, uh, those two rows, sorry, until you will have in total the same number of rows as uh, in the other side, so 20 rows in total. If you are working uh, this sweater in a bigger size, you will need to work more rows because uh, the armhole depth has to be bigger so now just continue and working those 20 rows and we are here at the end and we just have to make the bind of row and bind of those stitches to finish the front panel in the same way as we did on the other side we are just uh, working the stitches as usual just that uh, we are not keeping the uh, loop on the hook just pull it through the loop that you have already on the hook and also working stitches into that chains that are the spaces that were created by uh, yarning over and after completing this row we can just um, cut the yarn and the front panel is done and we will have to work the back panel and our last stitch and that was it and we finished the front panel now for the back panel you will have to repeat the same pattern so you will have to make a foundation of 60 stitches then work 40 rows to the armpit and then 20 rows for the armhole depth and then after finishing the back panel we will meet again to see how we will work the sweater uh, next so here are my both front and back panel I just finished them 
and now we will have to join the shoulders and then we will uh, pick the stitches for the sleeves so basically we will work the sleeves from the uh, exactly from the armhole depth not uh, the sleeves are not worked separately and then uh, uh, to have to stitch them uh, with the sweater we are just picking up stitches and working the sleeves sleeves uh, from the um, trunk of the sweater so now you'll just have to stitch together the shoulder stitches you'll have to stitch together the exact uh, number of stitches that we have left on the front panel so there were 15 stitches and you can use a mattress stitch or other type of stitching those uh, those stitches <laughs> Uh, depending on which method you find uh, easier and uh, you are more used to work with so now I will just continue and uh, stitch the shoulder stitches and then I will show you right away how to pick up the stitches for the sleeves and how we can calculate how many stitches we are picking because uh, in many of the cases you won't have uh, the same amount of stitches and the same number of rows on the uh, let's say in 10 centimeters or 4 inch so that's why you might need to add stitches or to skip stitches when you are picking uh, picking stitches for the sleeve but uh, Fortunately, this won't be our case because the gauge is quite close. We have uh, 10 stitches, 11 stitches per 10 centimeter or 4 inch and 10 rows. So basically the difference is not that big. But we will talk uh, um, more about it when we will actually pick those stitches for the sleeves. So here we are, I uh, changed the color exactly where I wanted my sleeve to be, my uh, to start so exactly at the armpit, so basically I know that where I have this lighter blue, this is where I need to pick up stitches for my sleeve. So basically we have 40 rows here, plus the seam, the shoulder seam. So if we have if my gauge is 11 stitches per 10 rows because this was the gauge that means that at every 10 uh, 10th stitch i have basically to pull out two stitches the difference is the difference is not that big so in case you choose to just pick st one stitch from each row uh, the sleeve won't look like uh, curling or something like that and it will be just fine but in case you want to have the same width uh, you will need to add one stitch at every 10 rows so in total you will need for these 40 rows that we have on the sleeve because we have 20 rows on the back 20 rows on the front you will need 44 stitches i just uh, picked up 42 stitches and uh, here in the seam because basically this is an extra row i just uh, pick up two stitches just because we need uh, an even number of stitches so the pattern uh, the stitch pattern to work so i just picked up two stitches from the seam and then one stitch into each side row that we have here side row stitch so i end up for the sleeve with 42 stitches and after picking up those stitches the pattern that you will have to follow is the same so this was the first uh, row as foundation and we are just have to make the turning row and then for the next row we will proceed the same as on the back and front with that uh, knit Tunisian stitch yarn over skip one knit Tunisian stitch to the end of the row so we will follow the same pattern as we uh, did for the front and for the back panel with the sleeves as well and you will have to work in total uh, 38 rows or until you have the number of stitches that you the number of rows that you need to complete in length that you need 
for the sleeve. So now just uh, you will just have to repeat the pattern. Um, this uh, this pattern that we did until now with the sleeves also the sleeves doesn't have uh, decreases so just work each stitch for 38 rows and after finishing the length of the sleeve we will have to add a cuff the cuffs and the bottom hem of the uh, ribbing is worked in a regular crochet ribbing we will use some slip stitch uh, ribbing to make those and um, but we will meet at the end of this sleeve to see how we can work the cuffs so now just continue and repeat the same pattern as for the back and front panel until you complete the length of the sleeve and then we will meet again to see how we can work the cuffs I'll just keep working here because I forgot to stop the camera but uh, I hope you don't mind for this but immediately we will meet at the end of the length of this sleeve to work the cuffs okay so I worked 38 rows in total for the sleeve now I will do a bind of row because uh, I want to change the color and because with the ribbing we have to basically start the row from the right to work in uh, to join the ribbing rows with the sleeve on the front side so that's why i'm doing the binding of uh, the bind off row because otherwise i will have to start the either from the uh, left either to start working um, with the same uh, color but I want to change the color so I will do the cuffs with that gray uh, in the same color in each one in which I work the uh, body of the sweater to the armpit this is my other cuff because I already worked it and now we will start to work together the second cuff so just rejoin the yarn into the first stitch here. You will have to use a 6 mm crochet hook. And we will rejoin the yarn into the first stitch. I am making also a slip knot here. Okay, and now pull it through and we will chain 9 or the number of stitches that you need uh, to uh, depending on how wide you want your cuff to be so I just chain 9 and then starting with the second stitch we will just slip stitches to the end of the row and at the end of the row we will join this row cuff row with the sleeve with slip stitches but I will show you right away how you can do that of course that the cuff can be worked separately and then you can uh, sew it or stitch it to the sleeve but if it's a method not to make a not to stitch with the needle then why not so now after getting at the um, end of the sleeve into the next two stitches of the sleeve you just have to slip stitch one slip stitch the first one is made just to join the row the current row and the second one is to start the next row and the next row we will start it uh, in and work the slip stitches only in the back loops so this is a slip stitch ribbing working the slip stitches just in the back loops and we will work all the stitches make sure that you keep these loops a little bit uh, looser because otherwise you will find it easier to ins uh, you will find it harder to insert the hook through those stitches like the last one that i have here 
Okay, and now you just have to turn, chain one and turn, and the same in the back loops. Work the slip stitches until you will get at the end of this row, so you will have eight slip stitches in total. And then we will join the ribbing rows with the sleeve by making two slip stitches into the next two stitches of the sleeve. So right here, okay. Now into the next two stitches here, just make slip stitches. As I said, one is to join the current row and one is basically to join the next row that you are just uh, starting. And now we have to repeat these two rows until we complete the entire width of the sleeve. And after finishing, basically we have to assemble everything. And I will use for the cuff also slip stitches. You can use uh, the needle as well, but because uh, we just have to change the colors using one color for the cuff and then one color for the sleeve, I said, okay, just keep it with the cuff and we can just uh, join it with slip stitches. At least uh, this uh, portion here. So I just joined the cuff with slip stitches. And then you can just cut the yarn and uh, start working on the second sleeve, of course, because we just work one. Well, I have uh, the other one done already, but you'll have to repeat the same for the other sleeve. And then what you'll have to do is to stitch together everything to stitch the sweater on the side starting with the uh, sleeves and then continue until the bottom of the sweater. And after completing the sleeves and uh, assembling the pieces together, basically we will have uh, only the bottom ribbing to be worked. And that one will be uh, worked in the same way as we work those uh, these cuffs, so it won't be uh, nothing uh, special. I work the bottom cuff in the same um, slip stitch ribbing and using the same color and the same number of stitches. So now you can simply cut the yarn here and then continue and assembling the. Um, sweater by stitching together the sleeves and then the body of the sweater and after that you just have to add the cuff uh, add the bottom ribbing and the sweater is done uh, the bottom ribbing of course that is not uh, mandatory not even the cuffs if you want you can work it if not you can let the sweater like this I just chose to work a few stitch uh, this uh, bottom because I wanted the sweater to be a bit uh, uh, narrower in the um, on the bottom. So this is uh, uh, how I'm working the uh, bottom hem. But basically, is the same. We are working it the same as we did with the cuffs. Only that, of course, uh, on the uh, this side, this portion of the sweater, we will have more stitches to work with, but you'll have to repeat the same uh, pattern until you complete the, the entire circumference of the sweater, and then to stitch together the ends of the um, of this ribbing. So I'm doing it in the same way as uh, with the cuffs just working the slip stitches into the back loop and when I got to the when I get to the uh, hem of the sweater I just join the ribbing uh, rows with the next two stitches of the sweater and this was it I really hope that uh, you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you will try to make it it's super comfy and it's super cozy and it's perfect for uh, these chilly days that are coming. So thanks for watching and I will
I will meet you next time with another video tutorial. Bye!